According to the complaint, quote, there is no doubt that AP's photographers participated in the October 7th massacre and that AP knew, or at least should have known, through simple due diligence that the people they were paying were longstanding Hamas affiliates and full participants in the terror attack that they were also documenting. Sure to come up in any potential trial is a man we've covered extensively on this show. The guy on the right with the big smirk on his face is Hassan Eslaya, who until over a month after October 7th was still working with the AP and others as a freelance journalist. The guy on the left, who appears to be getting pretty cozy with Eslaya, is top Hamas commander Yahya Sinwar. He's believed to be the mastermind behind the October 7th attacks and is currently the most wanted man in Israel. That's video of him escaping. In Eslaya's case, the question was, how was he able to gain access to capture images like these on October 7th and, and beyond? Photos like this one, taken on the day of the attack, it depicts the inside of an ambulance. The caption claimed it was damaged in an Israeli airstrike as Hamas terrorists infiltrated the border. When confronted with this information, the AP and other outlets severed their professional ties with Eslaya. He's one of four photographers mentioned in the suit as being, quote, embedded with Hamas during the attacks. But he's the only one believed to have actually been side by side with them as they went about slaughtering Israelis. And the lawsuit attempts to connect the dots between employing these so-called journalists and the funding of terrorism. Quote, AP willfully chose to turn a blind eye to these facts and instead profited from its terrorist photographer's participation in the massacre through its publication of the exclusive images for which it certainly paid a premium effectively funding a terror organization. The AP continued purchasing Eslias photographs until November 2nd. Close to a month after the massacres, before they severed ties, they released a statement on November 9th. Quote, the first pictures AP received from any freelancer show, they were taken more than an hour after the attacks began. No AP staff were at the border at the time of the attacks, nor did any AP staffer cross the border at any time. We are no longer working with Hassan Eslaya. Joining us now is Mark Goldfeder. He's the director of the National Jewish Advocacy Center, who is spearheading the lawsuit against the Associated Press. Thanks very much for coming on the program. Appreciate it. So look, I have enormous sympathy for the victims here. I've covered this issue a lot. Um, and in particular, I focused on this issue of terrorists who pose as journalists. But it does seem like it's going to be a tough case to prove that the AP ought to be held responsible here. Tell me why you think I'm wrong. Well, I'm glad you asked that question. And thank you very much for having me on the show. You know, what makes this case different is, look, right after October 7th, a number of major media organizations used these same photojournalists to document and to, unfortunately, help spread some of Hamas's propaganda and frame the attack. What makes AP different is that we have the receipts showing that they knew five years in advance that in particular Hassan Aslaya was affiliated with Hamas, deeply embedded with them, and that they were required at that point to sever their relationship or at the very least to do their due diligence and make sure he was no longer affiliated with Hamas. If organizations like Honest Reporting, which broke the story originally, uh, or our organization, the National Jewish Advocacy Center, which have an infinitesimally smaller amount of resources than the AP's investigative abilities, were able to uncover telegram videos of Aslaya not wearing any press credentials, mingling with and celebrating and cheering on the killing and slaughtering was really the AP knew or should have known as well. But so here's the thing. The AP you, you, the you know the way this works, right? They're hiring these freelancers. They're not doing the background checks that it sounds like you think that they ought to be doing. And probably when you're talking about something this sensitive, they ought to be doing. But, you know, the, the law, and, and I want to read it because you're suing under the Anti-Terrorism Act. And, and that reads, U.S. nationals injured by an act of international terrorism committed, planned, or authorized by a designated foreign terrorist organization may sue any person who aids and abets by knowingly providing substantial assistance or who conspires mm -hmm. with the person who committed such an act of international terrorism. You're going to have to show that they knowingly did it. Yeah, that's where the emails come in handy. So five years ago, they got an email from a different organization saying, hey, this person with pictures is affiliated with Hamas and you're paying him. Stop. And they chose to ignore it. And they didn't just give them money. I want to make it clear as well. Part of Hamas's overall global strategy is propaganda. It's to yep. get access to these incredibly massive and powerful media organizations. And by even allowing them to pretend to be AP neutral photojournalists, by the way, the AP has all of these lists of regulations and policies and guidelines for maintaining neutrality, certainly uh, he violated their own standards. No doubt. Should be a no doubt about that. We 100% agree with you on that. 
But I, I'm still trying to figure out how you win this lawsuit. The receipts, the emails, what makes AP different than every other organization is, look, the New York Times, CNN, Reuters, they all should have known that Eslaya was working with Hamas. How? They should have checked his telegram. They should have checked the fact that an hour before the first rocket launched, he announced it's going to be a great day, praise God, something along those lines. It's pretty clear that he had some advance notice. And in fact, there are videos of him training with Hamas operatives in advance that were all publicly posted on his Telegram channel and available for anyone to do the barest minimum yeah. due diligence. But I, let's give him a pass because AP had the emails. We literally have the receipts and they're included in the exhibits with the lawsuit. Five years ago, they were told in writing and they have no by way who? out. But by, by who? Who told? Who told them though? Some some per, some random? An organization called Camera, which then posted those emails for the public to see on Twitter, so that there was yeah. everyone was aware. It was an open secret. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your cable provider, and don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.